Let's have a look at the fill tool in Affinity Designer, which lets you apply gradients uh, across particular objects in your design. So this could be a linear gradient, a radial gradient, conical, or a bitmap gradient too. Um, so the key point about gradients is that they're transitions from one colour to another. And therefore they're really useful when you're using things like um, a backlit scene or uh, any kind of a scene where you have a light source and you want to give the idea of shadowing um, away from the sunlight, if you like. So uh, here's a good example of that. Uh, this particular scene we have uh, a foreground which is um, affected by the backlit sun there. And you can see the shadowing just coming into the foreground there, just slightly getting darker. In addition to that, uh, the area here, uh, you'll find that the, uh, this turquoise green colour transitions nicely into the yellow, so it doesn't give such a, a stark contrast in, and change in colour. So let's have a look at how this works. Okay, so I've removed the gradients from the design, so you can see it's a lot more of a, a flatter look to the, to the piece. So I'm going to introduce the gradients as you saw before and we'll do that by first of all using Alt click on this thumbnail to isolate this rectangle. And I can go to the fill tool here and I can just drag downwards creating a, a linear fill path which has these two stops, one at the top, one at the bottom. And you can colour these according to your design. So I've got these colours saved previously. So I want to make this one this kind of light uh, cream colour. And I want to make this bottom one a kind of a darker brown. And you can see we have a gradient there uh, between the two. It's kind of like a tr transition of colours. With the colours set I can drag this path again in different directions. And I can drag off the page like this and onto the page. So the choice is yours. You can just uh, set the gradient as you want. I think I'll leave the gradient just about there. So because we're in isolation mode, we're just looking at that rectangle. If I just click away from that, you'll see the colours come back. You can see that gradient just appeared now quite nicely. Let's now add this colour transition in this kind of area between the sky and the uh, horizon. So. We'll just come up to a particular rectangle which I've already drawn, but it's, it doesn't have any fill on it at the moment. As you can see, the type is none. So I'm going to now go to the fill tool again, and I'm going to drag downwards initially onto the, uh, that shape in the same way I, I, as I did before. But now because I want to transition, I want to select this end stop and do something slightly different. And what we want to do is to introduce uh, transparency to that end stop. So I'm not bothered about colour, I'm just literally going to drag downwards and completely uh, give that 100% transparency so it's as before. Uh, if I just then select on this end stop here, and what I can do now is to give this a different um, colour, i.e. The, the lighter cream colour that we used previously and I can adjust that end stop as follows. You can see that kind of transitioning appearing in stronger and less strong. Now what you also be able to do, even if you've got the linear path set, you can use this midpoint marker and just move that upwards and move that downwards without having to move the path itself. So you can control the transition of colour well. As well as colour and transparency that can be set on these endpoints or stops, we can select this particular end stop and do something slightly different. We can, by clicking this little uh, this little icon here, the switch icon, we can switch to noise. 
And this introduces noise as a property of colour, uh, which allows a, a more of a grainy look to the, uh, to the gradient, especially as it transitions from the top to the bottom. So with it selected, I'm going to drag the noise upwards to around about 75%. Quick zoom in. I'll just boost that just to show you the, uh, the graininess coming in. So just coming back out just to get a better view. And I will just switch this off just to see the difference there. You can see that gradient showing nicely. One thing I want to show you is the uh, radial gradient. And with this uh, sun highlighted here, um, we can introduce a radial uh, gradient. Just click from this type option on the context toolbar and select radial. And from there, we've introduced this, uh, this kind of orangey color. And I want to change that to be something more sympathetic and complementary in the design. So I'll go to the swatches panel and I'll pick a, a cream colour. Let's see that one there. Pick the other. A darker colour. And to get more of a look at the, uh, at the design or a closer view, click this and you can see that we can now adjust this radial around. We can drag the handles, just as before with the li uh, linear gradient. We can get different kind of effects. So I'll just leave that one there. Again, adjust the midpoints just for fine transitioning. Some of the other options on the context toolbar allow me to reverse that uh, gradient. So it's now in a, uh, a, the path is completely reversed. Incidentally, up to now, we've been applying the gradient to uh, the fill of an object, but of course you can apply uh, the uh, linear gradients and radial gradients to the stroke of an object too. I won't show you that just now, but you literally just select stroke and then apply the gradients as before for the fill. One, one final thing I wanted to show you was that on this particular uh, radial path, if I wanted to, I can just click anywhere along the path and introduce new nodes along there or stops and then give them different colors. In this instance, um, we could introduce uh, a blue um, or any color from the and then just pull the gradient path outwards just for different effects. Again, the midpoint mark is, can be adjusted for different transitions between the colors.